of this series is intended for mature audiences. We insist you heed the following content warnings before viewing. Horror things, language, adult things, and strong violence and gore, including gun violence. Welcome to the Weird West. Let us tell y'all a story. Currently, the sun is rising over the horizon in Boonville. At least you're pretty sure that's what this town is called. You just woke up and you left your rooms, making your way to the saloon for a place to sit that isn't a dusty and uncomfortable bed. The three of you gather through the swinging saloon doors and you find yourself sitting at a four person square table to the right of the doorway. The man at the bar gives you a nod as you've entered, but nothing more. He seems busy, his nose in a paper of some sort with glasses on the edge for him to squint through. Katrina left yesterday morning for her hometown and you're not sure how long she'll be gone. As you sit in this tiny little town for only maybe 24 hours at this point, you're already bored out of your minds. I will hand the floor over to you. Will you now describe for the audience, uh, you can introduce yourselves, your characters, and and how you look um, sitting at this table in this morning. Um, Roslyn, if you want to go first. Uh, I am Karish. I play Roslyn Blythe. She is a younger woman who uh, has dark curly, like a mass of black curly uh, hair that's pulled up into a partial uh, ponytail. She is wearing a, you know, just a generic corset type, not tied up too tight, just something she threw on this morning as she's sitting at the table, probably picking at some of the loose uh, wood that's been scraped off by various patrons throughout the years and just kind of looking around seeing what everyone else is doing as they come downstairs just being kind of bored um lavinia uh lavinia is also quite uh dark haired but her ponytail high and tight uh, um with bangs pulled out on the sides that sort of frame her face um she's looking really bored um, kind of sitting there at the table with her feet like kicked up, uh, probably on a chair that she's or a stool or something that she's pulled up next to her, and waiting for something interesting to happen. All right, and last but not least, hi, uh, I'm Kristen, and I'll be playing Maisie Taylor. Uh, she has long flowing red hair uh, that she wears down with sort of like a braided crown around the top of her head and piercing green eyes. She'll be sitting at the table looking incredibly agitated. Um, the stillness and lack of any progress or movement forward uh, unsettles her and also frustrates her. You know, she's in this to get stuff done and waiting around um, is not her specialty, nor is it anything that she enjoys. All right, so with that, the three of you are sitting at this table. Um, it's pretty early in the morning and you're, you're sitting there in silence for what feels like an eternity. Really, it's probably only been like 10 minutes. Um, there's not much in terms of customers in the saloon right now. Um, you see one person sitting over in the corner sleeping. They probably were here last night and just haven't left yet. Um, and the 
uh, person on the other side of the counter. He barely looks awake, but he's he's just there leaning against the wall. So you sit in an empty saloon with a barkeep that's paying you no mind, waiting for Katrina to return. What would you like to do? And this is fairly early in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. I think Rosalind is just, I mean, she's very anxious. She doesn't know where Katrina is. She's not used to being here. So I think she's going to look around at the other gals. So what are, are we just supposed to wait for her then to come back? I was about to ask the same thing. I mean, if I don't, anyone, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if, I mean, I don't, I don't think we should leave without her, but I mean, what if she, what if she doesn't come back? What if something happened? How long should we wait? I think that's what I'm wondering. That's a really good question. We could be sitting around here waiting forever and I don't have the patience for that. Maybe there's somewhere here that we can get something from at least. If you know what I mean. Make things a little more interesting. Yeah, but what, I mean, this isn't that big of a town. I mean, there's not, whatever we do, we're going to get noticed real quick, I think. Does that matter? At that, uh, the saloon doors actually swing open with a creak of a, um, a couple of the weathered hinges. And you hear heavy boots clunking against the floor. Um, the spurs on both boots kind of dig in and ding with each step that he takes. Um, someone has entered and is walking over to the bar. Now that looks like the exact kind of person I want to kill. Um, as you're glancing back, Maisie, make a notice roll for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, a uh, three. Was that a D4? Uh, I did the D4 and the D6, so they okay. were both threes. Okay, yeah, because you, you won't add them together, so yeah, that was correct. Yeah. Um, glancing back, the man walking in, uh, he's, he's fairly tall, pretty, not like, not like super muscular or anything, but he's got some heft to him. And as he walks up, his hat is obscuring his face and you can't quite see any features, but he walks up and you see him set down um, a couple silver dollars and push them over to the barkeep who uh, looks up at him over the paper. Do we have to kill him right away or could we have a little fun with him first? You know I don't do fun. I do. <laughs> then you can have your fun. I mean, we could, I all, we could all go up and talk to him. Let him choose. Fun, no fun, whatever you want to do. In, in the middle. Uh, I mean, I like to enjoy some things, but not, not you know, y- you know what I mean. Well, I think maybe we just have different definitions of fun. Hmm. That That's fair. I'm going to sit up and kind of straighten myself out since I've been sitting with my feet all propped up and everything. And uh, I'm going to look at the two of them and just go, shall we? Absolutely. And Maisie will stand up and also kind of like fix herself, fluff some things up to mm-hmm. present herself better and be ready to walk over. All right. So the three of you um, head over to this gentleman at the bar. All right. So as you walk over, um, how are you approaching him? And who is approaching him first, I guess I should say. Unless anybody's uh, really about getting to that first, I'd probably walk 
over pretty pretty quickly. Okay, and the other two are you just hanging like almost like a on on either side of her or kind of behind her or I I Maisie would kind of be both like so okay. off to the side but also right behind her her she would want to be very noticed but also clearly not the one initiating anything okay yeah i uh rosalind would take her lead and go ahead and just stay back a bit but still be still be seen sure all right so um uh as you're approaching this man, he doesn't even look over to you quite yet. Um, the barkeep grabs the silver dollars, brings them back, pockets them, and uh, he actually turns around and heads into the back. Um, and this is when this man turns his head to look over at the three of you. And um, he now that you're closer up, he's got like a leather jacket of sorts and it's brown with some wear and tear and you see um, a brown hat as well which which is what was obscuring his face um he looks over to you and you see a short beard kind of salt and peppered um mostly graying and um as he looks over at you seeing the three of you he removes his hat and you see greasy, graying hair that matches the color of his beard, and you see small, just cold eyes, just dark, cold eyes. Um, I'm gonna have all three of you uh, make a, make a notice roll. So if I roll a six, there was something that happened? Yeah, if you roll a six on your d6, you roll that d6 again and add that to your total. Okay, so that'll be an eight. Uh, I got a 10. I got a five. <laughs> okay, all of those are successes. So um, as he looks over to you, there's a moment where all three of you are kind of there's a fear that kind of flows over you for a moment you don't let it show in your faces you're pretty good about that you've seen this man before i'd say uh lavinia and Maisie, you this was this was one of katrina's clients You're not sure if he recognizes the three of you, but you you definitely recognize him. And he turns. Well, isn't this nice? Morning. Morning. What's nice about it? Well, you don't you don't see pretty girls like you in a town like this, do you? Well, apparently you do, because here we are. Yeah, here you are. And you are? I don't really think names are important in this line of work, do you? Never. You make things interesting sometimes. He glances behind him at the man that's sleeping in the corner and he says excuse me one moment and he turns and he his boots and spurs clunk and ding against the floor as he's walking over you see him walk over grab the man's drink and pour it on his face and the guy like <laughs> coughs and and wakes up and stands up for a moment in anger and the man just is looming over him he's very tall and um that brief moment of anger subsides and the man just looks up at him for a moment and he just nods to the door and you see the man that was sleeping just get up and, and walk out. And then uh, this is when you see um, this tall man walk over 
um, back over to you and he motions to your table and he says, we should, we should talk, please. And he actually walks over to the table and pulls out a chair for one of you. Talking is awfully boring. But I do enjoy a man that uh, can take control of a room. I'm gonna walk over and sit in the chair that you pulled out. All right, he pushes the chair in after you're in it. Um, are the are you two hesitating to sit? I think um, once Lavinia sits down, Rosalind will go ahead and sit. All right, as you as you walk over, he pulls the chair out for you as well. Um, Maisie will walk over to go sit and make no effort to conceal how irritated she is, but she'll go to sit. And if he pulls out a chair for her, she will sit in the chair that is not pulled out. Perfect. All right. So as you're walking over, he pulls out a chair and you walk around and you sit in the other one and he kind of nods and sits down, scoots in, you know, you're not exactly hard to notice. And I mean, that's the point though, isn't it? I guess that depends. My advice, you should be a little more careful about who you're stealing from. And he just casually pulls a revolver from his pocket and just sets it on the table. Hand still, hand, finger on the trigger, not aimed at anyone, just sitting on the table in front of him. Your uh, precious Katrina Divine. She got away with quite a bit of money from me and uh, I just came to get that back. Bold I, of you, uh, oh. Oh, go, no, go ahead, go ahead if you got something. Bold of you to assume that we're in control of anything that she does. Oh no, the way I see it is it's the other way around. She's uh, your caretaker or something like that, right? She's in charge of this mm. little operation you got going on. Bold of you to assume that we can't take care of ourselves. Do you see her here with us now? When she says that, I'm gonna cross my legs, and hike my skirt up, and make my my derringer noticeable. All right. Uh, so you want just him sort to of see backing it. backing her in like play that we can take okay. care of ourselves. Okay. He uh, he nods. He kind of brings the gun up a little bit, mostly just looking at the gun, not not really anything else. He's just looking over his gun. Here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna go over there. And he points to the, uh, the corner that the man was sleeping in. You can talk amongst yourselves. He grabs up. Uh, grabs onto the chair and scoots it back, but doesn't stand up quite yet. I'm gonna go get myself a drink. I'm gonna finish my drink. And then I'm gonna come back over here and I sure hope you've got $500 in cash sitting on this table for me. Things might get a little ugly. He stands up, the chair kind of scrapes against the wood as he does so, pushes the chair back in, and he backs up. Take, just takes slow steps backwards to the other side of the saloon, and he sits down. Ooh, I do not like that he thinks he's in charge. Let me slit his throat, please. Oh, I was going to shoot him, but if you want to slit his throat, that also works. Well, we could do both. Teamwork. Rosalyn? <laughs> Teamwork. Right here in the op- right here in the open? I mean, 
Usually we do all that kind of stuff behind doors, right? Well, he's it, saying he's going to get us right here in the open. How well, many do you think he can get before, you know, someone notices or one of the other of us can step up? Well, first off, it looks like the bartender went into the back and he got rid of the guy in the corner. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this saloon does have doors. So aren't we already behind doors? <laughs> the way I see it, he's going to make a choice. There's three of us and one of him. I mean, it does certainly seem like he paid off the bartender to go not be around for this conversation. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I just... I mean, never been out in the open with this kind of stuff before. You're always too sweet. Look, I, mean, I guess you could call it that. Maybe hesitant or maybe, you know, not not wanting to, to die right in the floor of a sal saloon. I don't... Well, if we on. don't do something, it certainly sounds like we're gonna die right in the floor of a saloon. I know, you're right. You're right. It's just... So what? what's your plan? Well, that's what we're here to discuss right now. I like the shooting him. We shoot him. I mean, probably best while his face is focused on a drink. That's exactly what I was thinking. He's going to take that drink. He's going to take a long swig. Done and dusted. Sounds good to me. And uh, Maisie will uh, pull out, you know, up from under her skirt, her Colt Thunderer that she has. Okay. And not make any move to do anything with it per se, but just be like, we should start initiating this before he notices or comes back. So is it... Um you've pulled it is it still like under the table or have you kind of brought it up um, it's under the table just so that like if one of the girls kind of looked over and saw they would know that like i'm ready to go mm -hmm. but it's not obvious it's just kind of that intergroup, you know dynamic of they would notice like my micro body movements based right. on the time we've spent together but it's not something that someone outside would necessarily read or pick up on gotcha okay um are is anyone else drawing a weapon oh derringer out all right i'm looking at her with those eyes that are like beat you to the kill shot <laughs> rosalind would have like a one shot or two shot Der derringer um i just wanted to note by the way uh him <clears throat> i picked the colt thunderer just because Maisie had been on her own for quite some time that she would have wanted something just a little bit like over time have gotten up to something a little bit beefier to protect mm -hmm. herself um so that one has uh six shots and 2d6 damage yes just and the, the range is quite a bit better as well Mm -hmm. Oh, in the time we have been together, Lavinia has noticed this and is having gun envy. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, and Maisie is frequently like making sure that it does not get taken from her person. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. So each of you have a weapon pulled under the table. Are you waiting for him to come back over, or what is the, I guess, execution plan? Oh, I think one of us just needs to take a shot, but you know that I prefer to savor it up close and personal, so I don't feel like it has to be me. Are we uh, waiting for him to take that drink or come back over here? I think Distance if we get the- up close. I think we should try to get him before he gets one of us. I mean, not that I like other option, but if we hit first, then there's less chance that he'll be able to react. Sooner the better. 
He's a Ready fly. Anyway. We should just swat him. I think upon her saying that, um, Lavinia is just gonna take it upon herself to uh, um, kind of twist out from her chair and just fire straight at him. All right, so are you firing still sitting down or do you stand up and like bring up the gun? How does this look? Uh, is probably a, just a bit of a flourish of twist, a twist of her body and standing up just enough to catch aim. All and, right. uh, with that look on her face, like, ha ha. <laughs> All right, go ahead and make a shooting roll. Uh, unless there are other bonuses to add to that, it's a five. Okay. Yeah. Um, shooting, um, you wouldn't have any bonuses or penalties unless I say, oh, he's behind cover, have this penalty, or anything okay. like that. And at some edges give you bonuses, but I don't think any of those do. Yeah. So, so it's five. Okay. So go ahead and roll damage for that. Ooh, uh, that's an eight. Okay. Um, all right. So as you, uh, first of all, did any of those max out? Oh yeah. Yeah, they did. Roll they that, both, roll that. Well, it was 2d4. They were both fours. Oh, roll them both oh again. Gosh. They exploded. Oh. oh my goodness. This guy's so dead. <laughs> uh, so that's eight. Uh, that's 13. All right. All right, so you watch as uh, uh, Lavinia spins and fires off his gun. You hear the Derringer fire off its shot. Um, it slams into, it actually, it was as he was taking a drink, correct? So he's, he's bringing up his glass and it actually, before it comes up, shatters the glass itself. And you see the, the bullet actually slam through uh, basically, like between his collarbone and his neck, right here, it just slammed through. You see blood spatter up on the wall on the other side. Um, he looks surprised by this, kind of staggers backwards. And now we're gonna draw our first round of action cards. This will be Maisie. Um, this will be Roslyn, Queen. These are high cards. Oh, you take the lowest, don't you? I'm so sorry. I do. <laughs> Still pretty good. An eight. Lavinia. And this will be for Mr. Man. Oh, Mr. Man. Mr. Man. A five. I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my bennies to redraw that. A little better. All right. So it looks up. It looks like up first is actually Maisie. Fantastic. Um, yeah, she'll stand up, um, probably the chair being thrown to the ground behind her as she stands up so fast and with force, and will take a shot with her Colt Thunderer at him. Wonderful. Roll a shooting roll. Okay, what do I do for that? All right, <laughs> so do you, clarify. do you have a shooting skill? Yes, I do. What is that uh, dice? Okay, that's a d6. Okay, so you'll roll a d6 plus your d6 wild dice gotcha. and take whichever one's higher. Just clarifying. No worries. Okay, so that is a five. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Okie dokie. Oh, that is also two d6. Ooh, okay, that is an eight. Okay. Let's see. All right, so you watch um, this bullet slam into basically his his side, like his midsection, but just right on the side of it. You see the bullet actually go through and lodge into the wall on the other side. You see more blood spray mm -hmm. out. He kind of takes that shot and stumbles back a little bit more with just this anger across his face. Um, now it is his turn. Unless you wanted to um, make any sort of movements, run anywhere, move anywhere. Uh, I think she would not. She's too stubborn. Just stand right there, just okay. Yeah, right where she was, yeah. Okay, um, for his turn, he has taken these two shots into his body. 
he looks up and he uh, pulls his other revolver from his other side. Now, two, one gun in each hand. He brings them up and he is going to fire one at Lavinia and one at Maisie. Um, just the two, the two that already pulled shots. He brings his hands up. The, the guns actually spin and then he fires both at the same time. Um, okay, so let's see how this works here. Okay. Um, I am going to have um, Maisie roll 2d6 for me. Okay. Okay, so one of those was a 6. Okay. And the other one was a 5. Okay. Perfect. All right, so these two, uh, he twirls his guns, brings them forward, aims them at you, and then he lowers both of them and fires. And, uh, uh, Roslyn, you watch as these bullets both slam into your friend's kneecaps. Both of them. One knee. Pop, pop. Both of them just fall immediately to the floor um, as these guns hit their kneecaps. He then, he keeps one, uh, he keeps one probably on um, Lavinia, who shot first, and then moves the other one towards you, Roslyn. Um, and he says, we could have had a nice quiet discussion. And that is his turn. Uh, Roslyn, you are up next. What are you doing? Um. She, I think she's going to point her gun at him. Just like right at his gun that's pointing at her. You you didn't really leave us much of an option of a quiet discussion with bringing a, a gun and setting it on the table in front of us. And then she is going to take a shot at him. Okay. Ooh. Uh, and I roll the 2d6, right, because of the hero, or do I just roll one? Uh, you'll roll two, and you'll take whichever one is higher. I got a six okay, on my roll. d6. Roll it again. Okay. Uh, that's a four. All right, so, so yeah. Ten. Um, roll some damage for that. Okay. That is 2d4. That's a five. Okay. Total. All right, so you see that shot. Your hand is kind of shaking a little bit. I mean, you're, you just you just saw this all happen so fast. You bring up the gun, you fire off, and you see um, the, the bullet actually graze past his shoulder. It doesn't, it doesn't quite even go into his body. It does cut, you see blood pooling, um, but it just grazes his shoulder. Uh, that is your turn. All right, so Lavinia. You are currently wounded, laying on the ground, knee just you don't, you're afraid to look at it. You don't even you don't even know what this could possibly look at. Blood already pooling on the floor uh, beneath you. What do you do? Uh, from the floor, I am going to look up after he said what he said and she said what she said. I'm going to be like, well, when a gentleman comes in and says that things may get ugly to a group full of ladies perfectly capable of taking care of themselves, we're gonna do what we have to do. And you just ruined some nice legs and I'm gonna fire again. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a Benny for that. And make a, make a shooting roll. Uh, let's see, that was a five. Okay, roll damage. Oh, that was less good than last time. That's only a two. Okay, um, so Sam, you're, you're on the ground. You're trying to level your hand. You fire off. Um, one of the bullets maybe grazes past his leg, but it doesn't, it doesn't even seem to affect him at all as he's standing there. Um, but these, these shots are just firing off from every direction. All right, that is the first round of combat. Round two, we have Maisie, a king. Hey! We have Rosalind, <laughs> Jack, 
man, you guys are having some great cards here. Oh, I have, I have oh, to yeah. have one more though. I am gonna forget that every time. That's fine. I can remember. A seven. You. Oh, that, how does that work? So I would draw twice. You take the lowest one, but you can also spend a Benny to redraw. So if it was something super low, mm -hmm. I would draw again. But are you taking that seven? Oh yeah. Okay. She's not too confident in this, so. <laughs> All right, and then we have Lavinia. That's a four. You want to spend a Benny for a redraw? Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> To keep the cards in order, here is Mr. Man. We'll keep it. And the redraw. Ooh, a king. All right, so uh, let's see here. I will, if you'd like, let the two of you go at the same time. I mean, you're both on the ground. Yeah you're wounded, you can act together. If you even want to come up with some sort of scene that you want to happen together, go for it. So I will look at her really quickly and just like do a quick nod, like a, like a we've done this before, we've been here before, um, and I'm gonna shoot again. Uh, and as I do, I'm gonna say, you're lucky my tits are my best asset. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have uh, I have fired my shots, so I would need to reload. Yeah, yeah. So if there is anything else you want to do, or anything even even to help. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say, can I assist her somehow? Yeah. How would you How would you like to go about that? Oh, if I can position myself in a way that she can lean on me to to steady her shot her, to steady her shot. Yeah. All right, so yeah, you actually um, see that you have to reload and you roll over to her um, kind of on your side, like you're both on your side, so your backs are leaning against each other and you use that to steady yourself for the shot. Go ahead and make a shooting roll. I'm gonna give you a plus one for this. Okay, so that's a six. Roll it again. I roll again. Yeah, it explodes. You, um, oh That's a gosh. six. Roll it again. <laughs> That's a five. I can't okay. do math. <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. That's all we need uh, to know. Um, okay. okay. Uh, and go ahead and roll damage. damage. Okay. And you're going to add two more d6 to this damage. Oh, oh okay. Um, six, six, two, three. Yeah, 17, right? Yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. A lot. That's that's all. Yep. We, it's a lot. Um, okay. Communication me... major. Math. Nothing. <laughs> I understand. Uh, let's see. Okay, so you steady yourself. Fire off this shot. Um, it, since you rolled so high, this is definitely against the rules, but I don't care. Um, so there is what's called a um, called shot where you would be at a negative two penalty for making the shot. Since you rolled so high and would have hit regardless if it was a called shot or not, is there anywhere specific that you wanted to aim? Uh, like right smack dab near his heart. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So you, you aim this centered in the chest, basically. Fire off. You see the bullet slam into his chest and you don't hear it come out the other side. And um, he kind of stumbles backwards a little bit again, eyes wide. And that is your turn. All right, uh, it is his turn now, I believe. Um, taking, taking that bullet into his chest, he looks around at all of you and he actually, um, you see him scanning the room, scanning the situation, and he darts out the saloon door. Roslyn. Um, so are they both on the ground? They are, yeah, bleeding. Okay. Um, it, can she do like a medicine check on both of them or on one of them um, to try to, I don't know, rip some fabric off her skirt and try to tie up 
Sure. Stop I'll, sleeping. I'll say if you're not gonna try to chase him, you um you could easily take the time to do a medicine check on both of them if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, she won't. Yeah. She okay. won't chase after him. <laughs> All right. So mm. he he rushes out and you see Rosalind immediately drop down to her hands and knees, looking at both of you. Um, go ahead and make um a medicine roll for each of them. Just tell me which one you're checking first. Is that um, a healing roll? Um, if you have healing, then yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that is a two for the first one. There's there's so much blood, you you can't see anything. Unless you want to spend a Benny to try that again. Um, yeah, I'll spend a Benny. And, and that's a reroll, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that is a three. Okay. Um, you're able to, like, basically, so much blood is pooling that you have to kind of scoop it away in order to be able to see the wound. It, uh, you still can't quite make anything out, not at this moment. Okay, she would just quickly tie it up then, like, Okay. Whoop, don't know, just tie it up. I don't know. <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, and that was for, um, was that for uh, uh, Maisie? Sure. Or yeah. whoever. Okay. Yep. And then the next one. one first. Yeah. We'll do Maisie first and then we'll do Lavinia. Okay. Um, and that is a f- four. Okay. Um, this one, um, for some reason isn't bleeding quite as much. Um, you're actually able to kind of wipe it away, clean it away. There's a, you you wipe the leg and there's a solid maybe second before blood starts coming from the wound again. Um, you can see where the bullet entered and you can see an exit wound. Um, and it's luckily not quite on the kneecap. Um, it appears to be more in the calf itself, but very, very close to the kneecap, very close to the shin. Um, you're not entirely sure if there are any broken bones yet, um, but you are able to see the bullet wound and do okay. with that what so she, she, so seeing that the bullet passed through all the way, she knows the bullet's not in there. So she's also going to tie that up, try to stop the bleeding. Okay. Um, and as she's doing so, she'll, you're fi- you'll be fine. We'll, we'll go see the doctor. The bullet's not in you. So that's good. We just got to. Why are you this. telling her she's gonna be fine? What about me? I, you didn't say I, nothing nice to me. I'm sorry, I couldn't see. You're bleeding too much. I'm sorry. I tried to stop the bleeding as best as I could. We'll go to the doctor and take care of both of you. I'm just can, laughing. Can I? <laughs> can I do like a healing check on myself? Sure, you can. You can try. You, <laughs> you're you're worried now. You're concerned. You you sit up and you start looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have a D8 in that. Do I also still roll the D6? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah. Just... Yeah, because there's a chance one would be higher still than the other, so. A D, and it's an 8. <laughs> an 8 on the, your D8? Nice. Yeah. Um, so that would explode, but it's a success regardless. So okay. um, go ahead and go ahead and roll it again, and we'll just see how much okay. of a success this is. That's a seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So you sit up and you're looking at your leg yeah, and I'm pissed that <laughs> I didn't get the same kind of treatment. I am mad. <laughs> and I'm laughing. I'm just <laughs> laughing. All right. So you sit up, you look at your leg, you, um, it's a little easier for you too, cause you feel exactly where the pain is. Um, it's nothing to get lost in the blood. So, um, you begin wiping your leg as soon as you touch uh right below your kneecap your whole leg just shoots with pain um it kind of shoots up into your hip into your spine um taking a moment to get a good look at this uh, i'm assuming Rosalind like tied probably um pretty close to the correct area but as you're as you're looking you your kneecap seems to be in place um but you're not sure how well you'll be able to bend and unbend this leg. The bullet entered directly below your kneecap and definitely hit bone. You don't feel an exit wound. I gotta um, go see a damn doctor. I that's hate doctors. 
Uh, that's what I said. We were going to go see a doctor. Both of you are going to have to go see the doctor. <laughs> this is why I like to do it up close and personal. They don't get a chance to take a shot. What are you talking about? That was fun. And he ran. The only thing I'm mad about is we didn't win outright. I'm mad you didn't run after him. And I look at Ross. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I could have, but then it would have just been me against him. And I, you saw how I shot him the first time. Do you really think I would have gotten him in one more shot? You I only have one more shot left in this. You saw how well we had shot him up before he ran. He was about to topple over. Maybe. Or maybe he had a whole nother, like, like a gang with him or something out there. You think they wouldn't have come in by now? First time they heard a gunshot, they would have run in. I don't I think know, it's time right? to do some target practice. First, let's just go to the damn doctor, please, so I can get it over with. All right, well, did, did either one of you see a doctor in the town? Like, any signs or anything? No. There, there was, like, the tiniest little, almost like, one room, more of like a nurse's office sort of thing. Um... There is a doctor in town. It's not like a hospital or anything, but there is a place you can visit to seek immediate medical attention. Well, one of you's gonna have to let me lean on you because my knee ain't moving. Well, seeing as I also got shot, I think you're leaning on her. I think you you both are gonna have to lean on me. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to do my best to lean on a chair and, and stand up because my pride does not want to let me have to lean on anyone or look like I'm right. wounded. Right. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, Maisie is going to make a real effort to stand up on her own, but it will be futile, I'm sure. Um, with Lavinia, you can... You, you can bend your leg. You can not put pressure on it like when you start to step it just hurts too much um uh Maisie you you don't even think about putting your foot on the ground you're standing with the one leg your leg also kind of um drags a little bit uh you don't have control of what's happening below your knee right now. So Rosalind, you just watch them stand up and they're like, I'm good, I'm fine. I'm, let's go. <laughs> and they're just standing in their own puddles of blood. Are, you, right. sure, are you sure y'all don't need help? Uh, oh, fuck. Yeah, I do. Half I of just... my leg is useless. Somebody give me a cane. Do we have a cane? And something attractive. Nice top to it. I just I can do this. Get over it. You got shot. You got shot worse. And I'm gonna <laughs> lean over and, and get help and try and take the help. Alright. I don't have the energy for you. What's even better about this is the way I have you on my screen, Roslyn is literally in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so it's wonderful. Um, okay, yeah, so how are we, how are we getting out of the saloon and across the street? Uh, Maisie will sling herself over Roslyn as like a human crutch, uh, you know, obviously using her good leg to do as much of the work as possible, but foot dragging. Right. I, uh, I've got my hand on her other shoulder and I am doing as best I can to hop as much as possible to prove I don't need help. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and Rosalind is, Rosalind is, she's pretty short already and now she's a little more shorter because she's carrying all this weight of everyone. <laughs> yeah, it takes you Just, a while to get across the street at this pace. Like, like, 
basically like helping two people along. It's a very, it's a very slow hobble. I'd like to think that it's like a scene that goes on for way too long. As they come out and it's just going by and everybody's like saying they can, do, I can do it, I can do it. You can't do it. Let's, we, we're, just, we're almost there. We're not even halfway. Like it's just this all the way across the street. Um, and finally you make it to what feels like an eternity for especially Roslyn, who is like helping the girls that are just like bickering and, and, and complaining the whole time. And you're just like, oh, you finally made it to the door of this doctor's office. But when one of you like to knock, I got my hands full. I kind of lean over on my good leg and I just daintily <laughs> tap on the door. Uh, you hear, um, we're closed. We got an emergency though. We're bleeding out. Three lovely ladies need some assistance. I can repay you in very pleasurable ways. You hear um, scraping, almost like furniture moving or something. You just hear something heavy move, uh, and then you hear footsteps come over. The door uh, unlocks and opens, and you see um, a, a doctor, I mean, a man dressed somewhat nice for this town. Uh, you've seen definitely better, but um, he's dressed somewhat nice. He's got his hair, it's kind of greasy as well. It's kind of slicked back a little bit, very short cut though. Um, and you see he's got like perfectly um, round glasses, tiny little wireframes um, on his nose, and uh, he's currently wiping his hands dry from being washed. You see a little bit of like pink on the towel as he's probably washing some type of blood off of his hands. Uh, he looks first at your faces, and then he looks down at the bleeding legs. Uh, and he steps aside. He doesn't even say anything. He just steps aside and motions for you to come in. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's about time we meet one nice man. The last one we met shot us, so. Tell me that blood you're washing off your hands isn't from the one that shot us. I, I know nothing about anybody shooting anybody. You hear gunshots all the time in this town. If it was the one that shot us, we could just pick up a scalpel and fix it anyway. Good to know. Uh, lets you in, shuts the door, um, and you see you see one um, poor excuse for like a hospital bed, um, and then you see a couple just wooden chairs in the corner as well. Pretty good. Um, a lot of lanterns hanging. Good lighting for at least the hospital chair part. And, uh, he looks to Maisie and he says, I believe you should probably go first. And oh, I was gonna say the bed's mine. <laughs> and <laughs> Maisie will flop onto it. Yeah, um, I will have Roslyn make a notice roll for me. Uh, that is a five. Okay, um, uh, with the other two being a little too distracted, Maisie laying down, um, uh, Lavinia trying to find a way to sit down but doesn't quite hurt, uh, you glance back at the doctor who has shut the door and is now locking it as well. And you see a little um, padlock on the inside which he snaps locked and puts the key into his pocket. Uh, Maisie has situated herself on the uh, hospital bed um and uh Lavinia is kind of sitting on one of the chairs uh Roslyn has walked in and kind of turned and saw the doctor shutting the door and, and locking it back um he turns around towards all of you and he says it's not 
entirely my business to ask what happened, but, uh, what the hell happened? And he's walking over to now look at Maisie's leg. Some asshole in a bar shot us. What kind of gentleman goes around shooting ladies? That, that is an excellent question. He uh, uh, didn't like our proposition, so to speak. Hmm. Yeah, most uh, gunshot victims I have here are typically dueling men, but uh, there's a first for everything, I suppose. And he begins walking over and he um, takes a, a, another key out of his pocket and unlocks a medicine cabinet. And he opens it up and you see him grabbing like vials, gauze, um, syringes, uh, bandages, all kinds of stuff, um, alcohol. Uh, he closes it, locks it back, tucks the key in his pocket, um, gets it all situated. Um, you're, you're new to town, am I correct? And he's uh, filling up a syringe. New enough. Ish. Ish. All right, fair enough. Well, he has that syringe filled and he fills one more. Um, so, uh, what you, uh, putting in that syringe? Just a little bit to help with the pain. We're gonna have to set your leg, and he looks, um, at you. Uh, we're gonna have to get the yeah. bullet out, too, and, uh, that's, you... uh, that's not gonna be, um, pleasant. I'm, uh, trusting you with an awful lot here, Doctor. Most people do. Do you have any sort of, like, drink that we could have that would help a little bit? Uh, I have some alcohol to steady your nerves, but digging a bullet out of a knee a drink ain't gonna do much for her. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe not for her, but maybe for maybe me. Oh, she has to, see watch it. has to go second. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Uh, and he, um, <laughs> sets, sets the syringes down. Um, and you actually see him open up the medicine cabinet again, put the vials back in, shut them so that just the syringes are out and the gauze and everything. And he kind of glanced back. Sorry about all the precautions. Um, we had an incident of a lot of medicine being sold from town before. I'm, I'm very careful, very careful now. Yeah, I was just about to say, Doctor, you yelled at us when we knocked on your door and, uh, seem a little skittish. Skittish? No, just, uh, very careful about who comes in here. Yeah, I'd call that skittish, but however you'd like to describe it is fine by me. Well, if I wasn't about to work on your leg, I would uh, probably have a drink as well. Uh, he walks over and uh, takes out a couple of cups, um, grabs a whiskey bottle, brings it over, um, pours, uh, he pours three drinks. Um, uh, he offers one to each of you, if you'd like. Oh, I don't particularly care for alcohol, but thank you. Ro Rosalind will take one. <laughs> okay, oh, just I'll one, or it. or will you will you take Maisie's as well? No, she'll she'll just stick with one. She just okay. doesn't she doesn't want to get drunk. She just needs to settle. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I will look at you not. I will look at you not taking that third one, knowing that she's not going to take the third one, and I will take the third one. <laughs> Wonderful. And I knock the first one back and I'm sipping the other one. Okay, okay. Um, and then he uh, grabs the syringes and uh, he walks over and um, he's tenderly trying to straighten your leg the best that he can to get a better... Uh, I uh, straightens it, sets it down just mm, barely. Um, mm -hmm. And then you, you feel just the slight pinch of the needle. 
And funnily enough, it's the pinch that makes her scream. <laughs> She's been fine this whole time, but yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, injects the pain medicine and pulls the needle, sets it aside. Um, that, that should take just a moment and then we'll be able to get started. Uh, he then um, walks over to Lavinia. He's like, fine, let me have him have a look at that. I, uh, I pull up my skirt and look at him with the, with, with, uh, deceptive, like, sad puppy dog eyes and go, <laughs> think you can fix it? <laughs> All right, he, um, he, uh, leans down and he begins inspecting the leg and, uh, says, who, who wrapped this? I just point. Very well done. And, um, he's... Uh, kind of looking it over. <laughs> uh, yeah, she really messed mine up. <laughs> I mean, I I wasn't the one who put the bullet in you. You think that helps? It doesn't. Um, yeah, he looks at your leg and um, sees the bullet pass all the way through and nodding and um, I will uh, go ahead and give you something for the pain here, uh, but it should just be an easy cleaning and and more secure wrapping to last you a little bit longer. Um, he kind of straightens your leg a little bit and and uh, you feel the pinch of the needle as well. Injects that and pulls the needle, sets your leg down gently and then goes over. Uh, you watch him like dispose of both needles, wash up his hands again. Um, and then he comes over with more of the gauze and the uh, alcohol and the bandages. And he pulls up a stool right beside Maisie. Um, you see You're very him. sanitary, Doctor. I love a man with clean hands. He, he, you see him, like, smile and then, like, <laughs> like regain his composure for a moment. And uh, you see a little bit of, like, red on his cheeks as he kind of uh, begins taking off the, the wrappings that Rosalind had put on before. Uh, you notice as he's um, like moving your leg now, touching your knee, it doesn't quite hurt as much. And you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of nice. Um, it's not sending pain up your spine or anything. He's, he's able to work with it. Rosalind and Lavinia, you hear, uh, you see him almost like digging into her knee and just, she's not reacting at all. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn and just keep drinking the drink, <laughs> the remaining just second looking drink. away. Um, oh yeah. All right, so, uh, it's, it's about maybe a couple of minutes into this that, uh, Rosalind, you notice Maisie is asleep. Glance over at Lavinia, and Lavinia's asleep with the drink in her hand as well, head resting against the wall, like, back against it. Um, the doctor has removed the bullet. You see he has put it um, to the side and he is uh, pouring alcohol into the wound, cleaning it. He's still, he's dressing the wound. Um, and you see he's in the middle of actually wrapping the leg right now. Um, I know we didn't specify, would we have had time to refill our guns? Like I would say you would shots? have done that before heading over, yeah. Okay, just in case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. And looking around the room, there's, is, is the main door like right there? Is this like a one room thing or did he bring us back to a back room? It's a mostly one room thing. Like you, as soon as you walk in, you have a tiny little open area. There are chairs in the left hand corner on the other side. There is some sort of shelf um, right across from this door. Um, and then on the right hand side, there's the bed and then a tiny little nook of like a little sort of kitchen area with a sink, more of a sanitary 
station. And that's the room. And the little medicine cabinet is between the sanitary station and the bed. Okay. And is there any sort of like, like there is a small back room, you said? Or this is just kind of it? This seems to be it. Um, as he's finishing up, I think um, Rosalind is kind of going to get up and just look around, not get too close to any of the medicine cabinets or anything, just kind of feign interest into what is going on. And then she's going to come over and get kind of close and, you know, kind of maybe lean over a bit. You're like, so how long have you been a doctor here? You seem to be doing a pretty good job. Uh, he is just now finished taping the bandages onto Maisie's leg. I've, uh, I've been a doctor running on, running on about 25 years now. And he um, fixes the clothes the best that he can. They're still like drenched in blood, uh, but he, he does the best he can to like pull the skirt back just into place. And um, then he looks over at Lavinia You see him stand up, go over, wash his hands once again, grab new equipment and bring it over to crouch down and, and work on Lavinia's leg from her position in the chair. Now, were they supposed to fall asleep? I thought it was just for the pain. That's uh, fairly, fairly common for pain medication this strong. Wanted to make sure they uh, you know, didn't feel anything. I mean, that that makes sense to me. Uh, 25 years a doctor, that's a long time. I mean, that's that's pretty much that's that's longer than I've been alive. Um, you must uh, you must have seen some stuff in that that time then. I've seen seen plenty. It's kind of why I came out here. It's quieter, mostly. And he looks like back over at uh, at Maisie for a moment, like this is some crazy shit. Um, <laughs> now, I have a proposition to make. Sure. Could I potentially spend a Benny to wake up earlier than perhaps normal due to the fact that my injury was so severe and painful that somehow some of it might slip through the medicine and therefore bring me back to consciousness sooner than perhaps normal. I will say, yeah, you can do that. I will take one of your bennies and um, that will be at a cinematically appropriate moment. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, it doesn't take him long to clean and bandage Lavinia's wound. He says it's it's gonna hurt for a while, it's gonna be bruised, gonna be tender, but it was looks like it mostly tore through some muscle. But eventually, she'll be fine. Um, and at this point, he stands up and goes over to wash up again. And where are you standing right now? I think she would have tried to stay close to him, so when he went over to Lavinia, she would have walked over with him. Okay. Um, all right, so <clears throat> excuse me. You hear from uh, behind you um, the same like heavy furniture movement that you heard from the other side of the door before you came in. Uh, she'll turn around and look <laughs> and see if she can see what that noise is coming from. As you look over, the one shelf that was directly across from the door um, is pushed aside and you see um, it had covered a small doorway into the back room. Uh, and you see coming out uh, the man from from the saloon with a shotgun in his hand. He comes out holding the shotgun, <clears throat> aiming it to you. He says, you're gonna pull that gun and you're gonna throw it on the floor. She will do like, you know, get it from under her skirt, show it to him, kind of 
throw it onto the the floor, mm-hmm. just getting it away from her a little bit. As you pull it out, too, he straightens up the shotgun a little bit, like ready to go, and you're you mm-hmm. just show it and toss it, clatters against yeah, the she, floor. Yeah, she she wouldn't even put her finger on the trigger; it would be absolutely like flat against it. Okay. Um. He steps in, and you watch him look over at Lavinia. Look over at Maisie. This is quite the morning, I must say. I'm a little impressed. Uh, it it has been a while since I've had a morning this exciting. That's that that's true. Oh, look, we're helping each other out. I have a question for you. Where's Katrina yeah. Divine? I don't know. And that, that's that's the God's honest truth. I, she said she had some business to attend to. He puts Left the shotgun here. up and just <laughs> fires off one shot, aims it back at you again. I will ask you again. Where is Katrina Devine? I don't know. She said she had some business to attend to and she had to go somewhere else and she left us here and we've not seen nor heard from her in days. At this point, you hear a faint knock on the door. <laughs> and uh, the the shotgun now turns to the chair or to the uh, the doctor. And the doctor's I didn't tell anybody. And then he just puts his fingers to his lips. <laughs> Hello, you hear a woman's voice from outside. silence for a little while a heavier knock i heard you were looking for me katrina divine here this isn't katrina's voice you know that just from this side of the door but this kind of makes him a little more interested and he nods to the door to the doctor the doctor kind of scoots past you and he actually walks over to the door. You see him with shaking hands, taking the key from his pocket and, and fumbling to unlock the padlock. He opens it, unlocks the door, pulls it open, and you see a woman standing in the doorway. Um, she's dressed like a traveler, um, but there's, it's almost like she's got like a corset and, and boots but then traveler's gear over it. Um, she has got, she has some sort of hood up, like obscuring her hair and kind of like tied around, almost like to, to protect it from the dust. And um, she has bright red lipstick. And as she comes in, she, um, she smiles at you, Rosalind. Hello. You have no idea who this is. No clue, but she comes in and she holds out her hand for the doctor and she says, Katrina Divine. And the doctor shakes her hand, almost like looking sick, like he he's... You definitely see guilt from what he has done. Um, she comes in and the, the man says, shut the door, doc. He, he does so, he shuts it, he locks it, clicks the padlock, puts the key in his pocket and he says, ah, I'll, I'll take that key. Dirt pulls the key, steps over, hands it to the man. And at this point, the man takes the key, but grabs onto the doctor's hand while he's doing it, pulls him just a little bit closer, and you hear one more shotgun blast as the doctor is just blasted through the chest. He backwards, slams down onto the ground. Um, And then he, uh, the double barrel now, empty, puts it back and it's harness at his back. That shotgun blast um, has started to wake you up a little bit, Maisie. You're you're still not quite conscious, but you're in that mm-hmm. state of where you're you're now able to hear the things around you. You're not quite able to move mm-hmm. yet. Your muscles are still lethargic, and mm-hmm. um, but you are able to hear things happening around you now. Oh yeah, she'll be planning slowly as the information comes in. Okay. Um, 
he now pulls one of his revolvers from his pocket and he points both Roslyn and uh, Katrina to go sit in the chairs. And he walks over to stand by the door. So he's standing by the door facing inward. Basically all four of you are in a line, just one of you are in the bed. And um, he sits there, he pulls the doctor's stool over there and actually sits on the stool. And um, Katrina goes to speak and he says, ah, and then just goes back to, he's just looking at his revolver and he just seems to be waiting for something. Um, as he's, he like starts spinning the chamber, clicking it into the gun, clicking it out, spinning the chamber, clicking it to the gun. This happens a few times before he uh, starts messing with uh, just some, some stiff, he's still got blood soaked clothes. He still looks like he's pretty hurt and uh, he looks over you, and he points the gun at Rosalind. Why don't you gather up their guns for me? Your friends, you know, the guns they shot me with, gather oh, them up. Oh, oh okay. Hmm. Um, now I will ask this, what weapons do you all carry? Um, Maisie carries her uh, Colt Thunderer and two knives. Okay, so, and then what does Lavinia carry? Uh, the Derringer and also a knife. Okay, so Rosalind, it is your decision. He, he knows of the guns, obviously, mm -hmm. but I imagine the knives are a little more concealed. So it is up to you what you take from the two. She is just going to take the guns because that's all he asked for. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, would she, would, um, uh, would Maisie, like, indicate that she was awake when Rosalind went over to her at all? Um, I will say you go over and you, like, touch just maybe even her arm or something to begin to pull the gun from her. And you, you do, like, the fingers just kind of twitch a little bit and you see the eyes moving, but that she can't open them yet. So you, she's stirring and you know that much. So as she takes the gun, I think wherever like she stores her knives, like if they're on her thigh or whatever, I think she would like, not in a very overt way, but somehow like indicate that I'm leaving you these, use them <laughs> kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and then would go and collect um, Lavinia's gun. All right. Um, so all three guns he has just kind of kicked into the corner that he's sitting beside. And um, he says, what about you, darling? You have a weapon? And looks to this Katrina divine person. Um, and she looks up at him and she says, oh, well, you're welcome to check. And you see him kind of chuckle. And then he clicks the chamber back in and points the gun to her and says, Enough with the games. We're done with the games. Do you have a weapon? And she reaches into um, a side pocket, almost like a bag that she has uh, on a belt. And she reaches in and she pulls out one um, peacemaker pistol and she pulls out a bottle of some sort of alcohol. And she says, can I offer you both? And he stands up, his boots clunk heavily as he steps, he takes the gun, he takes the alcohol, he heads back over, sits down, pops it open and begins drinking. And as he's sitting there almost, it seems to be like he's waiting for the other two to wake up. And he's just drinking this alcohol. Once he gets about halfway through this bottle, this Katrina woman looks over to you, Rosalind, and just gives you a little nod. Um, she will nod back. Not really sure what she means, but she's just nodding. It, it's it's like an inc like a comforting kind of like. Okay. Um. At this point, uh, so Maisie, you will be able to hear this. Um. 
Katrina looks to this man and she says, why don't you, why don't you tell them what you're really doing here? He clicks the revolver in and you see uh, he has taken five of the six bullets out. Puts those five on his lap. Um, And he says, I already told him, someone's gotta pay for treating me this way, don't you think? You're the leader of this little operation, aren't you? Looks to Katrina and she kind of cocks her head for a moment. unclicks the chamber, puts the one bullet in his hand, looks at it, makes sure that Katrina and Rosalind both see it too, (sighs) kind of blows on it, puts it back in the chamber, spins it, locks it in. Oh, it looks to me like we have six chambers, five empty. I'm sure you know what that means. And then Katrina goes, I thought you said we were done with games. Well, look, I'm a little bored. Didn't realize it was gonna take him so long to wake up. I will say at this point, Maisie, you are awake. You can decide whether or not you're pretending to still be asleep or if you're making it known that you are awake. Uh, I am gonna still pretend like I'm asleep. Um because I want to make sure that I have like the type of bodily movement that I want to have. So I'm, I'm being careful. Okay. So yeah, we'll say with that, um, you know, what, what side of you is probably obscured from his vision and you're, you're trying to move that arm, like that, that hand, you're trying to move those fingers to see how well you actually have your strength back. And it's, it's difficult, but you're getting there. Um, yeah, I won't want to do anything until I, I can tell my body is capable. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Um, all right, so uh, Katrina shakes her head and... What would have happened if these girls would have paid you your money? And he kind of looks at her curiously. The money is not what you are after, is it? He chuckles. So do you have my ring or not? And she goes, there you go. What's so special about this ring? And he takes another long swig, sets the bottle on his knee. You ever, uh, branded cattle or a horse of course not too pretty aren't you what I do is I make sure to brand every one of my victims before I bury them so that they know they know it was me when they dig them up, when I'm too far gone to be caught. He takes another swig. So you could see why I'd be a little upset. Do you have my ring or not? And Katrina goes, I might, but you're going to let these three go. And he chuckles and takes another long drink. You actually hear as he's putting the bottle down, you hear something clink inside of it at this point. He doesn't seem to have noticed. And uh, he says, it's a little personal now. They shot me multiple times. They didn't, I'm, I'm, 
if it was any other circumstance, I'd be mighty impressed with these girls. Didn't even hesitate. That one there, and he points to Lavinia, who's still asleep in the chair. That one there shot me before they even finished planning. It's almost a shame I gotta put you all down. And Katrina nods. Yeah, almost a shame. And he kind of squints, takes another drink, finishing it off and you hear something clinking um, and he kind of makes a face, puts the bottle down and spits out a ring. And he looks at it for a moment and it's like a mix of emotions. There's anger, there's, there's like this sick, twisted happiness, this relief as he's looking at his ring and he slips it back onto his finger. He's just got this crooked smile on his face and he grabs onto the um, the revolver with this almost like childish excitement to him now. You, you see the, the dark and the broody kind of just go away and there's now just this sick twisted excitement about what's going to happen next and as he um holds onto this gun and goes to stand up you see him kind of wave around a little dizzied and he sits back down and you see him trying to regain his composure blinking he looks over at the bottle and then he looks at Katrina and says, what did you do? Uh, I have a question sure. about like how many feet away from him would I be? Um, It's um, a pretty small place. I would say you're no more than probably 15 feet away. It's a pretty tight space that you're all sitting in. Okie dokie. Uh, you see him the the childish excitement is kind of fading and you see him raise up his gun and he's gonna fire at Katrina click uh, it just clicks it doesn't fire and for a moment you're pretty sure he forgot that he only had one bullet in the gun as he mm. fired and you just see his eyes widen for a moment in this moment, is there anything anyone would like to do? Yeah, so right as I'll have, you know, had my eyes open just a little bit for it not to be discernible to kind of see, you know, as he stumbles down. So sort of right as he's firing, I will have like slipped one of my knives out and like move to sit up and throw it at him <laughs> towards his throat. Oh, okay. Um. Meanwhile, Lavinia's legs have like fallen into an unladylike position. <laughs> and she's snoring a little. She's snoring a little. Uh, blissfully unaware. <laughs> Poor Rosalind is just getting, you know, trauma. It's fine. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's not exactly shooting, but it's still ranged. Do you have a fighting stat? Um, I have a, I, yes, I do. Okay. I do. I will say roll fighting. Okay. So that. that is, that's, that, so is that, it's a d6, so is that two d6? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because with your attack roll, you'll still have your hero attack. Okay. That's a six. Sweet. Roll again. Okay. Okay, so that's a nine total. All right, roll damage for your knife. Okie dokie. Okay, so my strength is a d8 plus a d4. Nice. Da, 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 da. Imagine knowing how to do math. Okay, so that's a four on the d4. Reroll that. That that okay. explodes. So okay. you'll add that all together. That's another four on the D four. <laughs> Roll it again. Okay, and that's a two, so that's ten 
plus the so that's 17 total aiming for his throat just okay like, tired cool. of hearing him talk Tell me how this man dies. <laughs> um, so, right as it clicks and, you know, the look of shock crosses his face because he forgot that there was only one bullet, um, I will, in that exact, like, split second, have thrown my knife and it will lodge, like, right in his throat cutting the jugular right there and uh he'll be gurgling and spitting up blood unable to say anything and i'll just look him dead in the eye and say i'm tired of your damn mouth all right and as that's happening he tries to bring his arm up and he does fire twice but they're both clicks before his shoulder slams into the wall and he falls over and you hear just a few more gurgles before his body falls entirely limp. Um, your your muscles are still so tired. It was it was insane you got this throw out in your arm. Like you didn't even control your arm after the throw. It was enough to throw it and then your arm just falls like mm. limp in your lap. And you even kind of just slump back down. Um, and at this point, uh, Lavinia, you are coming too from a really good dream you just had. Awesome. I stretch, and as I open my eyes and kind of take in the carnage, I just go, wait, what in the high hell happened while I was sleeping and how long was I out? Um, uh, be before, was... yeah, before um, anybody else gets anything out, this woman stands up. She pulls a piece of, a folded piece of paper from her pocket. And uh, you see her, she actually hands it to Rosalind, winks, and she leaves. Well, wait, where are you going? You might be the one, oh, and like Maisie's out of it. So like she, yeah. you know, doesn't even fully register that the woman has completely left. Yeah, you hear her um, heeled boots click against the floor as she leaves, and uh, there is there is Maisie half conscious. There's Lavinia coming to and asking what the hell happened. Uh, Rosalind, what do you what do you what do you do? As she is staring down at this piece of paper, she, she said she was Katrina. She, that's what she told the man, and he seemed to to think that was true. That wasn't our Katrina, though. No, it what was it? What was she give you? She's gonna open up the folded piece of paper. Yeah, you unfold it, and all it says is St. Louis has the real fun. Come see me. And it's signed with a lipstick kiss at the bottom. Have either one of you ever been to St. Louis? I've, uh... I've traveled through briefly, but not long, no. Oh. She's gonna show the letter so that the lipstick kiss is shown and everything. Well, apparently, St. Louis is where all the fun is happening. It sure sounds like it. If it's from that woman, she might have been the woman of my dreams. I don't know. Well, I guess we need to find a stagecoach or a, a train or something. Well, Katrina did tell us to wait here. But if she said she was Katrina and she knew about this man who was coming after us because of Katrina and she gave us a, a letter maybe from Katrina 
would that be Katrina telling us to go to St. Louis? It could also be some woman that's been saying she's Katrina and attaching us to whatever it was that she was doing. Do Does Rosalind recognize the handwriting on the letter? Make a common knowledge roll. Hey, yo. Um... Um, that is a four, and then because of streetwise, I get to add two, so that's a six. Okay. Um, you swear you've seen this handwriting somewhere, but nowhere, um, personally, like not something written to you, not something you even like knew, not, not someone you knew writing it and you were sitting beside them. You've seen this handwriting before, and as you're... As you're thinking about it, you start um, remembering a couple of the different signs um, at different rail yards. Um, you're pretty sure one of the uh, rail yard owners. This matches their handwriting so perfectly. The the ridiculous loops, um, the the loops and curves where they don't need to be. Uh, just all of the flair that's put into the handwriting. You're pretty sure this this handwriting looks like Nina Devlin's, I'm one of the owners of one of the rail yards. I don't think this is from Katrina. She's going to pass the note to. Uh probably Lavinia first since she's right next to her okay. and see if she recognizes the handwriting and if she doesn't she'll share what she knows I think I'll, uh, look at it and do I would I would do I have any reason why I would also recognize that probably not um I'll say I'll say probably not yeah yeah I'm gonna just hand it right back to her and shake my head as she hands it to Maisie I think this is Mina Dovlin's handwriting, but you know, one of the, the railroad owners. You would all recognize the name, but for like a personal standpoint, it doesn't really mean anything to most of you. It, it'd be like basically the equivalent of someone being like, oh, that's uh, this celebrity's handwriting. A very well known name, but nobody you've ever met before. Why, why would she be pretending to be Katrina? Why would she help us out? Is it maybe a publicity stunt to get people to buy tickets to St. Louis? <laughs> well, that's an awfully risky publicity stunt. She's well known. Why? I don't know if she needs to do anything like that. It's How would around... she even know Katrina? I mean, it's not like Katrina's on the same level as Nina. And how would she know that he would be here and we would be here and this would happen? And she had his ring at, when she mentions the ring, she's going to get up and look at the ring like that he had that he was talking about branding or whatever. Okay, yeah. Um, as he was executed, um, he fell over. His arms kind of sprawled out a little bit. And you walk over and you just pull the ring off his finger. His arm just thuds back down. Uh, and um, as you're looking at it, um, this is around the time that uh, you hear someone come through the doorway. Um, you see the local sheriff standing with his gun drawn, looking in at the doctor shot through the chest right in front of the door, looks over at the man executed in the corner, uh, looks at the bleeding woman on the hospital bed, another bleeding woman in a chair, um, and then you standing there looking at a ring. And he, he's, he like aimed his gun when he first came in, and then he just kind of puts it up like this and 
Do I even want to know? Probably, Frankly, probably. we don't even know. I mean, man came in, shot us, doctor was taking care of us, man bullied the doctor into making two of us fall asleep, shot the doctor after the doctor helped him, and uh, was holding us hostage and we got out of it. He seems to be processing everything you just said. He looks at the doctor, he looks at uh, the dead man on the floor. Well, that sounds believable enough for me. If you don't mind, um, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, That's a wise choice. And you're awfully handsome. Oh, well, he kind of stands up and straightens his clothes a little bit and <laughs> and turns around and walks out with this new attitude. Uh, loot the body, Rosalind. I didn't hear that. And he's <laughs> <laughs> I can't move yet. Oh, no, let her go. Maybe close the door first. Yeah, I'll go close the door. Um, I, oh, I can't really see, so. So as you're closing the door, you do close it. You see the, um, uh, the whole front of the door is just blasted with, uh, shotgun pellets and, um, the whole lock system itself blasted as well. Uh, and it just has the doctor's blood all over the inside of this door. As you're closing it, it doesn't, it doesn't even like latch. You can shut it, and it just kind of comes back open. It, it'll shut enough, though. She'll maybe scoot one of the chairs over to make it close a little bit more, just so yeah, it's scoot not the, scoot the swinging stool open. Over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, what does the ring look like that she has? As you're looking at the ring, um, it's just a simple. It almost looks like it's like copper or or something, and the the front of it is a perfect circle with a horseshoe imprint on the inside. And seeing that you've, I mean, you've heard of the horseshoe killer before. It's a pretty popular story everywhere. And there's just this moment of realizing exactly who the man was. Okay, (laughs) so she'll put that somewhere for now. Um, And then I guess, not like happy to do so but like kind of moving his clothes around trying to find like his if he had any more guns or valuables or whatever she thinks the other gals would want (laughs) sure do you have an investigation skill um i do uh i have a notice and i have thievery um i do not have an investigation Unless that is when I'm untrained in. Um, I'll, I'll let you do thievery. You can do thievery. Uh, do thievery. Blah, blah, blah. I can't talk. I will thieve him. I will thieve him. <laughs> um, that is a two. Uh, do you want to spend a Benny and roll again? Um... No, Rosalind's not that interested in it. <laughs> okay, so you kind of like are obviously like trying to move the clothes and you just I didn't find anything. Like you just kind of give up. Yeah. Um would I be mobile enough and see that she's being super ginger that I would just go over and just pat the guy down? I'd say you could definitely like crawl over. Um, okay. Still probably not strong enough to get up and walk or anything, but yeah, you crawl over, start patting the guy down, go ahead and do you have, you have thieving, right? I, yeah, I do. I do. Can you at least get my knife out of his neck? <laughs> I, I will do that for you in a second. Thanks. Um, oh, that's not bad. That's an eight. Okay. 
Um, yeah, looking through this man's pockets, um, he has he has a Bowie knife on him. Uh, he has his other revolver on him still. He has a pocket full of ammunition, both for his shotgun and his revolvers. Um, you see he has um, kind of a little kind of backpack sort of situation going on. It's not quite on, like strapped on both sides. It seems to be like a satchel with a strap that goes around his middle instead. Um, and inside of it, you see some more ammo. You see a knife block, like a knife sharpener. Um, you see, uh, there's a little bit of rope in there, not much, it's kind of bulky, not easy to carry around in a bag, but um, he's got a little bit of rope. He has um, just some dried like jerky, just food for the road. You can tell he definitely doesn't stay in one place very long. Um, and you will also find, uh, about maybe $75 in there as well. I would like to, uh, take one of his revolvers for myself. Cool. I'm going to pull her knife out of his neck. I'm going to take his other knife and I'm going to hold it up and go, who wants? Uh, obviously, I want the knife. So I will hand her her knife back and his knife. Um, and I'm going to grab as much of that ammunition as I can for the revolver. And All right. pocket that. Um, and you, what specific kind of knife did you say that was? Bowie knife. And I give, I'll give you guys all the stats and the whatever ammo count um, later. All right, so you collected, you still, there's nothing on him that tells you his name. There's nothing on him that tells you what connection he may have had with um, this woman that came in and had his ring. Um, nothing really gives you any answers you you know you recognized him you know you know he was one of katrina's clients but that's it be sure to grab that money oh yeah i fully i i try to pocket the money without telling any of you that i found it oh no oh <laughs> Maisie, did Maisie see that we'll Maisie. say we'll say for the purpose of your, your guys' relationship in general. Um, you pull the money and you fold it and you go to like pocket it and then that's when Maisie says, be sure to grab his money and you're like, damn it. <laughs> that's added to the group pile. <laughs> Let me remind you, you were snoozing while <laughs> I threw a knife into his neck. I shot him first. I killed him. And I had to sit there and talk to him and be held at gunpoint while y'all got to sleep. Yeah, we get it. You made out with the trauma. We got it. All right. I think, okay, we can split it. This time. That's fine. Split it. Hmm. And it's around this time that you begin to hear um, what sound like horses. Um, trotting into town, approaching from the distance. Uh, you can hear it through the like cracked open door. Um, some horses coming into town. I think Rosalind will go either to the door or if there's a window to peek out. Like, don't like just kind of peek out and see if she can see anything. Peeking out, uh, you see um, three horses, a rider on each, and you see them. Uh, galloping up, um, one of them is actually Katrina Divine. 